Want to use a PGR in wheat, durum, oats, or barley, but don't have time for a separate pass? With Manipulator PGR, you can spray from one tiller up to early flag leaf, so add it to the tank with your herbicide and save the extra time. Manipulator PGR shortens the crop and strengthens stems to reduce lodging risk, increase harvest efficiency, and maximize yields. Ask your local crop protection retail to make a plan today. It's now time for the beef market update with Ann Wasco of the Gateway Livestock Exchange. Ann, how are you doing on this fine Friday? I am good. Good to see you, Sean. Good to see you as well. It's great to chat with you. Lots going on in these cattle markets. Uh, definitely not straight up. It's a lot of all over the place, depending on what's happening on, on a yeah. daily basis in the news for sure. So give us an update on the U.S. cash and cutout. Well, you're right. Lots of influencing, especially coming from uh, from the outside noise and, and especially uh, continuing to see daily news in terms of the the uh, avian influenza and now the bovine influenza, as you've talked about already. So, but it, bottom line is the cash market in the U.S. this week is going to end about two bucks lower in the south. So that's going to be 182. In the north, we end up trading at 185, which is also a couple bucks lower. The dressed market in the north, 293 to 295 delivered, and that's two to four dollars lower than last week. So, you know, unfortunately, after making that high a few weeks ago of 189, the market has certainly been, you know, pretty, uh, pretty much uh, down each week since then. Um, really starting with the news back uh, at the end of March on uh, the avian influenza. So that's disappointing. Um, but we talked about two weeks ago about, you know, timing is not good to recover at this point in time. And that, that's exactly how things are playing out. Now, the choice cut out last night, we did see it gain a buck, but I don't think we've got to read too much into it. So it closed at 289.35. We did have smaller kills this past week. Uh, Ramadan and there's some cooler uh, cleanouts being done. So with a smaller kill, smaller production, that often supports the cutout. And I think that's really all that happened there. The one comment I did want to make was on the select. You know, I talk about the choice cutout. There's also a select cutout. And it's only trading $3 back of the choice right now. Hmm. And I think one of the reasons for that narrow spread is there's some pretty big demand for our lean trim market right now, the 90 trim, as we call it, or the hamburger beef market. And uh, what's happening now with the shorter supply of that type of product with our smaller cow kills in both countries, we've got um, some of those end cuts getting ground up. And so uh, putting putting some good strength or good demand on uh, on those on those end meats and that'll get ground and blended in with some to make those 90s. So the smaller cow kill is certainly, you know, that's less hamburger beef and uh, strong trim prices. And that even feeds right back to the Alberta cow market. I know we're talking about a U.S. select um, choice product, but the Alberta cow market last week, 172 was the average that Canfax reported, that's another all-time record high for, wow. for slaughter cows. So it's just crazy what prices have been doing to, to respond to it. And what's happening right now with the basis then for for uh, some of these markets? Yeah, so there, one of the things that, so I've talked about the U.S. market's been lower the last few weeks. The Alberta fat cattle market has not. And it, what's been going on, Sean, of course, earlier this year, we talked about the a very weak basis. There was times we were trading Alberta hot cattle $25 to $28 back of the U.S. market. Well, Alberta cattle prices were slowly getting more current, and we've got the market was up again this week. So Canfax reported $412 to $415 dressed. That's delivered dressed. When they do come out with their live average later today, I think it's going to be up in the upper 240s. Um, so again, a nice jump on that market. And we've been we've been watching this go on for the last few weeks. So, for example, say three weeks ago we were at a minus, or back in February we were at a minus twenty eight. Um, this week to the April board with this cash market today, we're going to be plus three. Oh, so what really? a big switch from well under to now over the U.S. market. So, and we've had a weaker Canadian dollar. You know, we cracked under seventy three today. So, you know, that's also been supportive to this this relationship. And then on basis, just to maybe finish that story off, the same um, kind of trend going on uh, for feeder cattle in, in Western Canada. We continue to see them narrow the gap to U.S. feeder cattle as well. So um, in February, Alberta feeders were 27 under the nearby board, and last week they were only seven under. So, And that's wow. more in line with that, with that three-year average. So both, both markets, fats and feeders, have been... Catching up, we were well back with the U.S. market when we started this year off. 
and, and speaking of, you know, comparing Canada to the U.S., we're, we're also set in fat cattle south? Yeah, and and there therein also is a factor in how we're how do you improve basis when you've got a very front end loaded supply like we did when we started off January in Alberta, lots of fat cattle available. So we've seen more not just slaughtered here in Canada, but now seeing more move to the U.S. as well. And it started off. We talked about this data when it came out a, a while ago. Sean was January exports for fats were up eight percent. February we just got that data last week was up fifty one percent. And the preliminary March data, um, which we won't get from StatsCan for a bit, but just looking at the weekly data, it's going to be another big number. So we're going to have a Q1 was a, a, a quarter of really cleaning up and getting cattle moved to all different directions, not just within Canada, but also to the U.S. And that's helped to narrow this basis up yeah. as well. That's why Canada may be tackling that product of USA labeling and not having segregation at the plants. Boy, that, that's why they're arguing against that label. Uh, because of you know the demand for Canadian fat cattle uh, going to some of those U.S. Especially stores. at times like this, exactly. Yeah. Okay, and so then uh, feeder cattle coming from the U.S. into Canada, I would imagine that has not slowed down? No, and we got same thing when we got the export data, we got the feeder import data. So feeder imports in February were uh, just over 26,000 head came north. Um, and even when you net out, yeah, there was a few feeder cattle went south as well. But even when you net those out, Sean, we were a net importer of feeder cattle for the month of February to the tune of 19,000 head. So it's wow. still a big number. And um, so, you know, that continues to just uh, uh, reinforce this two-way trade of live cattle and beef. It's, it's, a, it's across the board. Man, it just shows you how important it is. Just it reinforces it. North American integrated market. Just keep yes. on uh, keep on saying it. Uh, now, preview expectations for the Alberta Cattle on Feed report. What's what's that yeah. going to say quickly before we wrap up? Yeah, so Canfax will release their report this afternoon. That's for Alberta and Saskatchewan. And my expectations are that, uh, like it was for the first of uh, March, so this will be April one, that it should be down. Um, you know, maybe two or three percent from a year ago. Next Friday, the U.S. will release their April 1 on-feed report, and already guesstimates are coming out that they're still going to be 2% above a year ago. So finally starting to see maybe numbers in, in Western Canada come down, especially these feedlot inventories. And once we do break under a year-ago levels, I think we'll stay there for the rest of the year. The feeder supply is going to be that just that tight. Yeah, and it, it, you know what? Um, to wrap here, uh, weather has got a lot better. And anybody that's calving in this kind of weather right now is uh, feels like they're a little bit they're they're thankful. Uh, comparison to the last few years, this has been a great calving season so far. So knock on wood, whatever. Yeah. Um, it's been a great a great season. I, I was tr struggling with my words there, trying to find how I actually should uh, how I should uh, describe it. I, I think I hit the nail on the head. Okay, and thanks so much for joining us for this week's beef market update. All the best to you. Okay, thanks, Sean. Have a good one. It's now time for a product spotlight here on Real Ag Radio, and uh, we're joined by Jody Griffin. She is program coordinator for the Livestock Price Insurance Program with the Saskatchewan Crop Insurance Corporation. Jody, great to chat with you. It's great to chat with you too, Sean. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, of course, lots happening in the livestock industry right <laughs> now. Is uh, so, you know, calving season is always a very, very, very busy one. Um, Today, we're going to talk about, obviously, livestock price insurance and how that has a fit for producers. Um, g give us an update. What's going on with livestock price insurance this year? Well, livestock price insurance is kind of doing the same thing as what these cattle markets are doing, you know, over this past year. We've experienced some record high coverage for producers be, to be able to purchase. And I'd really like to focus on the CAF program today because there's a deadline to that program, which is June 13th. So I'm just going to kind of cite what's going on this week because um, CAF coverage became available yesterday. It's offered every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But, you know, top coverage on the CAF program this past week is about turning about 17% higher than where we were last year at this same time. And premium rates they're trending about the same as what we were last year. And I, I say that through the lens of premium as a percentage of coverage, because that's how we talk in the insurance world, but it's trending about the same in, in cost as what we were last year. 
Um, so, and that's just referencing the top coverage um, on that premium table that our producers look at. But I really want to remind our producers that we offer more than one price. You know, it's a premium table um, that has a variety of prices that's offered. And this year, there is excellent price protection to be had from the top to the bottom of that premium table. Okay, so we if we look at that premium table and we look mm -hmm. at some of the volatility out there in the market, um, those things add up to me about you know trying to protect myself, especially uh, if the market goes uh, against me. From your standpoint, why should producers purchase an LPI policy? You know, and that is a really good question that's been being asked a lot, especially when we've been on this, you know, great ride of high markets. But, you know, listening to you and Anne over the last couple of weeks on the, those market reports, it has been a stark reminder to us as producers that these markets are volatile and unpredictable. So with avian flu, you know, impacting that dairy sector and causing our cattle futures market to kind of topple over, because LPI is a forward-looking market-driven program, that type of news also set that back on the price insurance. So to reference back, you know, at the beginning of March, you could buy calf coverage at 394. 394, Sean. We were saying, you know, if the market was below that on six weight steers for the fall run, like in that time frame in the fall, price insurance was going to pay. Well, now we're down to that 366 range. But, you know, even saying that, as I referenced before, that's still 17% higher from where we were last year. And if the message has got to be sent to say anything, it's that now is not the time to get complacent when we're in this type of environment. You know, this, this tool, this program is as important as we always say it is, but I would say it's even more important, right? We just got a lot of things that are happening there. And when we get into these markets that are this high, we know what that does to the volatility. It yeah. drives that volatility just a little bit higher. Yeah. Was... I also, can I add just another yeah. thing here too, Sean? Um, and I, you know, we hate to have this discussion, but, you know, so we, we've got that event that's just occurred here in the last couple of weeks. It's really kind of bolted us into an upright position to be paying attention. The other thing, you know, especially for us up here in Canada, our industry is, talking a lot about a topic that we don't like to talk talk about and that's foot and mouth disease and you know we don't like to talk about that but we know that it's a discussion that's being had at every le level of industry groups and i just need to remind these producers that lpi is the, about the best defense that you can have against a border closure threat and so if you want to think of that, like we don't like to think of those things, but LPI was created off of the catastrophic event of BSC, and it's here to protect against those catastrophic events. So when I go back to that top to bottom coverage, you know, that top level down to that bottom, and that always speaks to costs on premium. Premium tends, of course, to be the cheapest at the lowest. If you just want to look at look at the price insurance this year from that lens, um, there is, like I said, there is some really good protection out there to, and pr we're talking protecting margin. There's times you and I've chatted in the past where it's about protecting losses. We're still talking about protecting some really good margins, margins in the cow calf sector. So don't ignore the insurance. Yeah. Well, you hit a lot of things that need to be top of mind when it comes to managing the risk. And, you know, we got a lot of, we got a lot of, Cowboys and cowgirls listen to the show, so to speak, and not a time to uh, just let it ride. Well, I, I think to wrap this up, I just uh, another reminder that I want to give to our producers in this type of environment is price insurance is about establishing a floor price. Sometimes we have to be reminded of that. It's about protecting the down in the market. Yeah, make sure everybody you go to lpi.ca to... Correct to find out more and uh, get a hold of Jody and her staff if you have any questions. Hey, Jody, thanks so much for joining us here today for this product spotlight. Thank you so much for having me, Sean. Have a great day.